Ladies and gentlemen, it is your favorite bearded man, the one, the only, Bob Bay. You see that? Yeah, that's me. That's me right there. Yeah. You ever heard this podcast? No, you haven't. You should probably check it out. It is the best podcast in the world. Uh, iTunes ranked it number one. Uh, just unfortunately, hasn't really shown up on the charts yet. Little miscommunication, but we're gonna get it solved. Today, I wanted to make a quick little video on how to start a podcast, how to launch it. I'll kind of give you guys some insight on what my thought process was to getting mine off the ground and kind of, you know, hopefully give you some value as to maybe if you have an idea of starting one, this is how you're gonna do it. There's definitely a lot of different ways to go about it. This is just the way I went through, so, you know, I'm not Mr. Know It All, but this is just my process of how I got my podcast, Purpose in the Youth, the best podcast in all of the world off the ground. So starting with number one, step number one, figure out what your podcast topic is going to be and make sure it is something you enjoy talking about a lot. I'm going to be reading from this blog post. If you want to see the actual like in detail, you can go onto my website under the blog section, purposeinthyouth.com and then underneath you can go to getting my podcast off the ground, you know, starting it. The first part being figure out what your topic is going to be and make sure it's something you are willing to talk about a lot. When I was thinking about starting a podcast myself, I at one point thought about maybe doing like a health magazine type podcast. It was gonna be on men's like fitness, fashion, women, maybe some like health and like good foozy workout routine. It was just gonna be so wide range. And that's when I realized this was actually something I couldn't see myself having to talk about a lot. Like, yeah, do I go to the gym? Of course I do. Or, you know, do I pay attention to fashion? Of course I do. But was it something I was actually passionate about? Something that I cared to read about and to talk about on a weekly basis? It really wasn't. And that's when I sat on the idea and wanted to find a podcast topic that I actually cared about and wanted to learn more about. And that's how I got into this whole passion uh, project style podcast was because this whole thing about graduating college and trying to find what the next step was and not sharing like what my purpose was. So then I launched this podcast, Capturing the Stories, because I actually was interested in sitting down with passionate people and getting to hear their story of why they do what they do and what inspires them and you know what have they gone through in their life to get to where they are today, because I think that's really interesting. Uh, so you wanna make sure this topic is something that you're willing to talk about a lot, because when you get it going, you need to stay consistent, obviously, but you really have to be able to talk about a lot. So ask yourself, is this something I really wanna talk about a lot? And if it is, I think you need to keep going. If you can't honestly see yourself wanting to read more, wanting to research more weekly, even paying attention to anything within that industry or within that world, you might not wanna follow through with it. So make sure you figure out what the topic is gonna be. Make sure it's something you're willing to talk about a lot. And that's the first step to launching your own podcast. Step number two, invest in the equipment. Hardest part of the entire process is now putting the money up and buying the equipment. And you can do this a lot of different ways. The, the way I did it, was I bought some semi-expensive equipment because I wanted to push myself to buy really good equipment so that I had to fall through and actually make this podcast what it was. I couldn't just buy a $50 mic and go for like three or four weeks and then say, eh, this is actually not what I wanna do anymore and then toss it to the ground because I actually wanted to create something and it was almost like a binding contract of buying really good equipment if I do that, then I have to fall through with it. So you don't have to buy really expensive stuff like I did. This is a Rhodes mic right here. Uh, I got this on Amazon. This one specifically was 229. All the links to all this equipment that I'm about to go through in the description below. So if you wanna click into it and check it out personally, you can. So I bought this Rhodes mic along with this armband, which I'm looking at the prices because I have it all written out. This swivel boom arm was $98. Then your regular XLR cord, which then gets plugged into this Focusrite interface. Two mic inputs right there, plug in USB back of the laptop, which then gets plugged into here. For the mic, shock mounts, which you're seeing right here, the boom arm, the cord, as well as the mixer. This was a grand total of 888, which is expensive, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you need to buy really good equipment at first. Um, I had saved up pretty much all summer, kept putting money away, putting money away, and then invest it into the equipment. So if you wanna start and you can only afford $50 mics or the cheapest mic on the market, do it, buy it. The hardest part of the entire process is actually starting. If you have a little bit of money saved up and you're willing to invest into it, I also would say maybe go for it. Quality is gonna, is gonna be really good, but at the end of the day, what's more important is that you produce. Like you learn as you go. 
Uh, people are only going to see you get better if you're starting at a cheap mic and then you work your way up to something that's professional like the Rhodes. So it works both ways. If you can invest, invest. If you can't, not a big deal. And then obviously you need a laptop to record software. You can start with GarageBand. I use Ableton, which is a pretty, pretty intense uh, editing software that I don't even use to the full capacity of at all. You'll, you can you know, do some research on how to make your vocals sound a little bit more cleaner and crisp. That's not a big deal. I also have like a desk stand one so that when I'm on the go and traveling, I can just pop up shop, I pack up a backpack, and I'm ready to go at any spot. So it doesn't have to be, I, I don't want to keep being a dead horse, but honestly, it doesn't have to be something as expensive as this. But like I said, if you want to invest and you really are passionate about what you're about to go on to, then do it. Go for it. It's going to make the sound quality even better and pull people in. If you can't, fine. Not a big deal. Buy the cheap equipment. Learn as you go. You're only going to get better. And as you get better, maybe start to invest in better equipment. And so too with the listeners. See, as you start to build and get a better podcast platform, they're going to actually be able to tell through the podcast that they listen to. Number three, creating a brand. You have the idea. You have some equipment. Next step, very important, creating a brand, okay? This is the packaging of the good, your podcast. It's like when you go to the grocery store or you, you're buying a new backpack or anything, any consumer good, it needs to be packaged correctly. And the hardest part sometimes is getting people to click into your podcast when they have no idea what it's about and the first thing they come across is your album work, right? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys the first album work that I originally had. Um, this was the, the original Purpose in the Youth podcast image. Uh, shout out to my man Dylan Reese who created this. This was the original cover and it served its purpose. It was perfect, literally served its purpose. And it was very simple. I wanted it clean cut, very easy to look at, very kind of soothing to see. But as time went, at the six month mark, I then upgraded and updated this po to this podcast cover as you're gonna see right now. And this is now the, the actual Purpose in the Youth podcast uh, cover art. Uh, the drawing that you're seeing of this lovely bearded man right here is uh, was done by uh, Jake Reader, who's out in Chicago. He does some phenomenal work. What I would suggest is maybe including a face in your podcast. People are gonna get to know your story so much that even if you do something similar to mine where I'm interviewing guests, they get to know you along the way. And I think it's great to be able to put a face to the podcast. As you saw in the first actual artwork of mine, there was no face, um, which was fine. It wasn't a big deal. But I felt that as time went, this podcast was becoming so much of me that I wanted to put a face to it so that people could be like, oh, there's the bearded man. That's, that's his podcast. You know what I'm saying? That beardy guy. Yeah, I know. It's weird. I just love the beard. I think it's beer gang for life. You you want the name too to be on point. I'm talk I jumped the gun and started talking the album work. The naming of it has to be perfect, right? It has to be something that really summarizes what this podcast is about, what your podcast is gonna be about, whether it's a food podcast, whether it's a sports podcast, whether it's a million different other podcasts, you know, purpose in the youth. Once again, shout out to my homie Dylan who packaged it for me. Uh, he's been like a creative director behind this podcast for me. My whole thing was trying to find people's purposes and their passion and, and focusing on the youth of the world, but also understanding that even if somebody at the age of 50 years old is coming across my podcast, like what was your youth like? What did you enjoy in your youth? Because I can guarantee you that the things that you enjoyed in your youth probably translate into maybe what your passion is today. Uh, so knowing that it was going to be a passion and a purpose type podcast, uh, we were kind of able to come up with this purpose in the youth, the branding, the logo, and everything, um, and it and it made total sense. So spitball some ideas, write down a bunch of a bunch of words that really summarize what you're trying to do, and put it on a piece of paper and just look at it and and try to try to come up with a good idea or a couple of good ideas and run it by your friends and run it by family and and really try to try to nail something down because once you start and you get going, that's it. That's your name. You can update the logo like I did, but the name is the name. And if you ever want to change it down the road, it's going to be real tough to do so because people are now going to be looking at a completely different podcast, a different name. You're going to have to rebrand and it's a headache. So think about what your name is. It's going to be easy once you understand the branding behind it of what the podcast's intentions are and what you're trying to do with it. Uh, and from there, you just keep on chugging along. Our step number four, research and understand podcast platforms, okay? Briefly in on the actual blog post, just talk about kind of uploading podcasts and the process that I went through. And it's not easy at first, I will tell you this right now, because when I started, I knew nothing. I knew that I could possibly 
I wanted to host it through SoundCloud because everybody uses SoundCloud. But I had no idea how was I going to get it to iTunes? How was I going to get onto Stitcher app? How was I going to get to all these podcasting apps? How was I going to make this podcast available? And I would suggest putting them on all these platforms because you want to be on the podcasting platforms that your listeners are checking it out. You know, if somebody comes up to you and is like, hey, I want to check out your podcast, are you on iTunes? And you're not, that's a problem. You want the distribution to be everywhere for the consumers. I don't care if you're only getting five plays from iTunes, that's five more plays you have on that project than you ha if you had not put it there. Uh, so a little insider tip, for instance, I upload to SoundCloud and from there, all of my podcast content gets distributed to all these platforms, to, to iTunes and to Stitcher and to all these other podcast platforms because there's a thing called RSS feed and from there you can upload to all these different platforms and instantly when I upload to SoundCloud, it gets sent out to all these platforms. Do the research. Understand how to get your podcast available. I don't want to give you all the answers because I think it'll help, but I will tell you if you want this, and once again, you don't have to do this. Start with a SoundCloud account, upload your podcast there, go into the information, you can find out where your RSS feed is, and from there, that RSS feed is going to help you get it to everywhere else. You make accounts on iTunes, you make accounts on all these other podcasting apps, and from there, you're going to submit the RSS feed. And once you do that, they approve instantly all your content is going to be distributed so make sure that do the research only learn more things along the way i learned from the jump you'll learn and you'll appreciate it once you start to learn and you weren't just given the answers step number five have at least four weeks of podcast in the vault before launch right it doesn't have to be four weeks it could be five five weeks of episodes maybe you want to do two weeks of episodes right if you're going to be a weekly podcast i really really suggest you have content in the vault before you start because once you start you have to keep going that is the I think the key to success for any podcast, uh, I would suggest being a minim at minimally a weekly podcast. Pick a day of the week that you like to produce and you want to put out. Uh, be smart about the day of the week that you choose, depending on what you're actually creating. But I would really, really suggest getting a couple in storage, and then when, once you release, you keep going. Definitely would say has been the most important part for my success in, in my little successes, but in my own world, my own success has been a consistency. Like that is, I think across the board, podcasting or anything else in this world that you're trying to do, consistency is the key. Once you start, you have to hit the ground running. You have to keep producing content. I don't care if you got five listens on the first episode, maybe you'll have seven on the next, then you get 15, 20 and it keeps going. But if people are showing up to your podcast channel on the days you release and there's no podcast, not gonna look good. And if you continuously do that or it's every couple weeks it doesn't show up, they might actually start losing trust and faith in you to produce that podcast. And instead of listening to your podcast on Wednesdays, they're gonna listen to a different podcast on Wednesdays. So I would say try to get as many podcasts in the vault as possible as you can. And when you're comfortably have a month or so of content, announce that you're gonna release the podcast Give yourself a couple more weeks, try to get some more content, and then when you release, don't stop. Do not stop. With At this moment in time, with 60 episodes being out, I've, missed, I've only missed one week uh, in that 60 weeks, and that was early on. It was like the day before Thanksgiving. To me, it was like, all right, well, this is a good day to miss because I was at like episode seven or eight, and I also realized that everyone's on vacation. Nobody's really paying attention to my podcast at the time, but I know that this is the only one time I can allow it. Other than that, it's been consistent all the way through. I did a two week break when we moved out here to Los Angeles, wanted to kind of enjoy the road trip and not have to worry about producing content. And I think, I think the followers and listeners actually understood because it was this huge transition to getting a new studio set up and there's a whole new environment. So. Two weeks was fine, but other than that, it's been consistent every single week. It's not easy. It sure as hell is not easy. You're giving up going out on the weekends a lot. You're giving up on sacrificing on other things that you want to do when everyone's doing it, going to fairs, going out to parties, going to the movies. You have to give up something to get to that bigger picture. And as long as you're believing in what you're creating and you really, really believe it, you're going to be okay with making the sacrifices. I've had to make a ton of sacrifices, missed out on a lot of things, but I know in the long run that, that this will pay out. You have to have that vision too. When you hit the ground running, don't stop. It is very important you stay consistent. Step number six and the last step of it all, launch the first episode and let the journey begin. This is the fun part. Thought of the podcast idea. You got the equipment. You got the branding, the packaging, the album work done. Did the research, you figured out how you were gonna get that podcast onto all these platforms. You then figured out, sure you had five, six, seven episodes in the vault, however many you wanna have. 
and now you release. It's the day. It's a big day for you. I will never forget August 31st, 2016. It was the day before I moved into my new apartment in Boston. I was home. I was in my kitchen by myself. My parents were at work. My sister was somewhere. She might have been in, in her room. And I was at the countertop. I released the episode. I was with my homie. And I got like 40 plays in the first hour. I promoted it all like month long. And I was like, holy crap, 40 plays in the first hour, 40 plays in the first hour. And then like three hours later, there was like an extra 10 and then an extra five. And I was like, okay, 60 plays in the day, let's go. We'll get 60 more tomorrow. And then it just tanked and it, it became the real journey. Just know that it's, it's a long journey, right? And the results aren't just gonna happen overnight. They really are gonna take time. You have to really put in the work. I don't know how else to say it easily. I, I don't wanna say that it's, it's not easy. Um, there were a lot of days that I was producing literally the night before I came out because of just timing on things. And you get to the point where, you know, people are gonna support you in the very first episode because you, you're telling everyone about it. Really where the success is, is after that. That first episode is a lot of built up. And then after that, it kinda just, I don't wanna say it declines, but you get so much attention for that first episode and people are like, all right, this is cool. And they might tune in from episode two, three, and four, but. A lot of them might not. They just wanted to check out what you're doing, thought it was cool and left. You have to really believe in yourself. It really comes down to you, your team, who's helping you produce. Uh, it's on you. It's always been on me. I, I'm lucky I've had my homie who's helped me kind of creatively direct it. But at the end of the day, all the way is on my shoulders to produce. It is my project. It is Bob Bay, the one and only. He's the man behind the microphone. It's his podcast. If I don't show up and produce, nobody cares. The people care to hear it, but nobody cares to come text me. Yo, Bob, you should have had that podcast up. You should have had it done. Nah. It's on me. It's on you. It's on us as podcasters to produce content. No excuses. No, nobody cares. You have to produce. But enjoy the process, right? So I, I it's crazy to think that I still so much remember the first episode. And I can promise you that having 60 out right now feels unbelievable to me take one episode at a time enjoy the, the entire journey enjoy the small victories when you get your first 100 plays when you get your first 500 plays when you you get a oh, hundred subscribers when you get a hundred followers on soundcloud find little successes along the journey because that is what's going to keep you motivated and going you can't start the podcast tomorrow and be like all right can't wait to be a number one that's a good long-term goal but you have to find these little goals along in the short term they're gonna really help you appreciate that long-term goal. Uh, it's a long, like I said, I can't say it enough. It's a long journey, and things aren't always gonna go the way you want it to go. A lot of things are gonna happen you don't expect, and you just have to be prepared for it and be ready to go. and And know that I guess what I'm trying to say is that as long as you believe in yourself, you can accomplish this podcast. You can be the number one podcast in the world. You just have to be willing to put in the work. There are people out there that have hundreds even into the thousands of podcasts at this point. You need to prove to people that they need to give you your time and attention and they need to be listening to you. And that's gonna take time. You won't have the process figured out in the beginning, but by episode 10, episode 20, 30, 40, 50, as time goes, you're gonna get more comfortable behind the microphone. You're gonna learn a lot of lessons along the way. You're gonna learn the do's, the don'ts. A lot of people might not even wanna be on the podcast or might not listen at first, but people will show up. Continue to produce, believe in yourself, do not stop. Lastly, the most importantly, Enjoy the ride. You'll get to that ending destination so long as you believe in yourself, I promise you. I've only gotten to 60 just because I believed in myself. I have other people and you'll have other people around you supporting you, but at the end of the day, it's on you. I can't say it enough. Produce, enjoy the ride, and kick some ass. All the links to all this equipment is linked up below in this video. Uh, if you wanna see the written format of this podcast, I will have that right below as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it is somewhat valuable to you. If there's anything you'd like me to cover next within this podcasting world about social media or you know something along that realm, I don't know what it could be within podcasting. If there's a question you want answered, drop it in the comment section below. I'll maybe take that and make a video for it. If you have any feedback, positive or negative, haters, hate, go ahead, drop a comment. If you love it, drop a comment too. Um, and please make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. I know that's a lot to ask for, but it's what allows me to keep producing this content and hopefully will allow me to make a living doing this and produce content daily at one point in my life. Uh, I know it's coming, it's just a matter of time. So thank you again for watching this video. I hope it was very useful to you uh, and you guys have a great rest of your day. It's your man, Bob Bay, dropping the hottest vlogs, the hottest videos, best podcast in the entire world. 
Hope you guys enjoyed it. Catch you guys next time.